Live Case Interview, a product or service launch case, Pudong Hospital. Hey, Doa, welcome. Are you ready to get started? Hi, Risha. Yeah, I am. Let's go. Wonderful. So our client is Pudong Hospital, a hospital based in China. And they provide most medical services that you can think of, including surgery, kind of consultative type of, um, services as well, uh, across 15 different medical departments. They do have a couple of key gaps, though, in their current services, which include pathology, um, nuclear medicine, biochemistry services. And so they're currently exploring, particularly for the pathology service, whether or not to sever their current contract with a third party and offer that service within the hospital so that they can provide cancer patients with the full suite of services that they need, all within the hospital. So they've brought on our team to help them evaluate whether or not that makes sense to move forward with. How would you help them think about the right path forward? Okay, so uh, before we get started, I would like to just clarify to make sure that I get it right. It's a Chinese hospital group that has several services, out of which is pathology, but they're currently not doing it in-house and they're considering whether they should get the service done in-house or not. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's spot on. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I, I will just build my framework on that. But before we start, I would like to clarify a couple of other points, if it's okay. So first thing coming to my mind is how big is our client in size? And another thing is like this pathology service thing, since it's a very technical thing, I wonder where does it stand in the value chain of their hospital service as a, as a whole? And any particular objective, if they have any either financial or strategic that I would like to know before I start building my framework. Do we have any information on those points? Absolutely. So, so all three of those areas are great questions. In terms of hospital size um, or kind of organizational size, our client is a 30-year-old hospital group um, with 20 500-bed hospitals spread across mainland China. So pretty, pretty sizable operation. Um, in terms of your second question, I think around pathology services and, and where they sit in kind of the value chain, that's the diagnostic phase for most cancer treatments. And so once a patient is diagnosed, the related therapies like surgery and chemotherapy start after that process. So they currently direct their patients to their partner laboratories to provide those pathology services. Um, and again, that's the upfront part that they're thinking about bringing in-house. Um, and then I think your last question was around financial objectives. Is that right? Yeah, both either financial or strategic, any kind of objective that I would like to know. Sure, no, great questions. I think from a strategic and operational fit, of course, want to flag any, any areas where that just wouldn't be the right direction for the client, um, whether that's fit with their existing services, things like that. In terms of financial goals, they do have um, a pretty clear-cut goal there where they, they would like to generate $30 million in profit in total over the next five years to deem this a worthwhile investment for, for their hospital. Okay. Okay. Awesome. $30 million in terms of dollars over the next five years in total is profit. Yeah, right? exactly. And for, for okay. simplicity, just assume USD. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And it's a big hospital group with... 20 big hospitals. Okay, perfect. Uh, may I take a minute just to build my framework and then I would like to verify it with you? Of course, take your time. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so uh, in my approach to this case, I would like to split into three groups and within each three, there will be some subsections. First of all, I would like to check whether this investment is uh, fitting strategically to the client. Under strategy, I would like to check both the internal and the external. And under internal, I would like to see whether it's compliant with the client's vision, whether the client has enough capabilities to implement this this investment and whether they have you know, the competent processes that they can integrate to the new work environment. 
And on the external part, I would like to see who our customers are and how will they be affected by this and who our competition is and basically whether we will have a sustainable competitive advantage by making this move. And lastly, how will such move affect our brand image as the hospital group? So this was a strategic fit part. And the second part is the financial assessment, of course. And under the financial assessment, I would like to see basically how can we benefit from this financially. Under that, I would like to investigate the revenues, which we can break down as the number of new treatments times the, the revenue per treatment. Of course, we need to clarify that point. And on the cost side, there will be some probably one of investment and then there will be some change in the cost structure, both the, the fixed and the variable side. And after having this profit calculation, I would like to see basically whether this profit expectation meets our target of 30 million within the first five years. And then if so, will we be able to afford that investment as the last part in the, the financial assessment? And the third section will be the risks, given that we have a strategically and financially feasible investment opportunity, I would like to just consider some risks, which I can, of course, clarify it later on in the case. But first of all, it can be our relationships with the, our current partners, which you mentioned as we were outsourcing the pathology services currently. And another risk can be adoption of the new processes by our organization after the investment. And the third, lastly, will be the demand side, whether there will be enough demand from the, the customers from the market in this pathology services that we're going to launch. Um, how does this framework sound like? Let's see how the candidate is doing so far. He starts the case well by recapping the initial prompt and asking important questions, such as the definition of pathology services. Understanding the core offerings earlier in the case is essential to make the framework sound more customized to the case. Overall, he provides a good structure to his framework. First, he suggests assessing if entering the pathology services is a good strategic fit for the client. Second, he will run the numbers to check if the proposed strategy will meet the client's financial objectives. And lastly, the risks. In terms of area for improvement, he could have asked his clarifying questions one by one, instead of asking three of them altogether. As a general comment, asking multiple questions at once in any part of the case may make it hard for the interviewer to follow the candidate. No, I, I think that's a, a solid and pretty comprehensive framework. Um, so, so sounds great to me. Where would you like to start? Yeah, perfect. So I would like to start from the strategic fit first. And under that, the internally, I would like to see, like basically investigate whether this investment is compliant with our vision, if you have any. And then I would like to check whether we have enough capabilities to implement such an such an initiative. And lastly, how do our processes uh, basically work and whether they can be adopted to the, to the new work style after the investment. Do we have any information on those three points? Perfect, Ab absolutely. So in the, the vision piece, it sounds like we're talking about fit with um, services currently provided by the hospital and, and kind of the equipment and facilities needed for that. Um, so in terms of a fit with that vision, the client does wanna make sure that bringing the pathology services in-house would flawlessly integrate with the other services um, and departments within the hospital. So that's really key. Um, but the requirements for those pathology services themselves are quite similar to other things already in the hospital. So a little bit of good news there. Um, in terms of the, the resources and capabilities piece, again, kind of off of what I just mentioned, the, the hospitals in the group do not currently have um, in-house resourcing and capabilities specific to those pathology services. So they might need to you know, bring on talent that is capable of handling those services as well as perhaps adapt some of their current processes to again, flawlessly integrate with whatever is already provided by the hospital. Um, and then your, your third question on process, again, there's, there's kind of no clear information 
uh, right now on whether the client can adapt those processes, but there will definitely be need to. Um, so building off of that, that, that final piece, which is really important for implementation, since the client does not know if they're able to adapt their process to run the new department based on today, what past information would you want to investigate to help them determine whether or not that makes sense? Whether they can implement their, whether they can integrate their processes with this investment, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So whether or not they can adapt uh, the way they currently run their operations to fit that new service. Yeah, so one way to look at it is that you mentioned that they have some operations that are similar to pathology services. It can be either another lab-based, I'm just brainstorming here, another lab-based practice. I may want to check whether they implemented a similar uh, service to pathology in the past and whether they successfully integrated their processes with that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's a great question to see if they've been able to do something similar before. Um, so we do know that the client currently has a blood test laboratory, which uses pretty similar processes to pathology services. They launched it 15 years ago, so it's a, a pretty mature offering, um, and it's operational in 18 out of its 20 total hospitals. Okay, okay, perfect. So given that we have this information, we can assume confidently that the integration of the processes is not gonna be a big issue for the client. Yeah, absolutely, I, I think that's right. Okay, awesome, perfect. Uh, as the second part in the, the strategic fit section, I would like to check the customers. And I would like to know basically better about the what kind, of, like who are our customers and how can we segment them, how big each segment is. Do we have any information on that? Yeah, no, great questions. I actually have a, a little bit of data from our client on that that I'll, I'll share mm -hmm. with you now. So in terms of customers, our client has um, on an annual basis about 800,000 patients split across the following patient groups. So about 400,000 who come in for regular checks and short visits. So think of things like blood tests, um, kind of in and out quite quickly. Another 200,000 for general bed stays without severe conditions. So these might be things that are um, kind of non-urgent or non-critical surgeries like plastic surgery. And then the final 200,000 patients are there for long-term care, bed stays, and stays with severe conditions. And so of that final group, about 100,000 are cancer patients. So kind of based on that information, how might this customer base be affected by the launch of this new pathology services department? Okay, I see. Um... So it can be two things maybe. So first of all, there might be an increase in the number of patients who are taking the cancer treatment from our hospital because we will be providing a, a better service. And the second can be that basically we can gain new customers that don't exist currently just to choose us because of the, the seamless the proce treatment process. Um, yeah, I think those two can be the biggest uh, changes. Great. So I, I think both of those areas make sense, um, but I'd love to better understand what you mean by better services and how that might drive either more treatment for existing customers as well as net new customers. Yeah, so better quality service to me in this case is if we are currently providing a most part of the treatment, but we are using a third party for the pathology part, then it might have some implications on the, the basically the flow that the patients they follow in terms of the journey and they may need to interact with those third parties at some point in the treatment while in the new scenario we're going to be providing the basically seamless let's say patient journey to those clients the customers so they won't have to deal with the multiple parties but they will just get everything done by just dealing with our our service. Yeah, completely makes sense. I think having that continuity of care is really important for actually the outcome um, for the patient just period, as well as reduces friction and stress in that process from kind of porting your medical records back and forth 
um, and things like that. So, so it completely makes sense. Perfect, perfect. Um, then as the next point though, I would like to uh, investigate a little bit the competition and I would like to know basically who will be the other competitors that we will need to face with and how can we break that down? Sure, sure. So there are two um, main categories of competitors in the market right now. So there are hospitals with pathology departments today that already provide those full, um, full suite of cancer treatment services. This group tends to have very high quality services at a high cost and meets about 70% of demand. Um, the second group are these private laboratories that provide external support to patients in partnership with hospital groups. And so this tends to be a little bit more affordable, um, but again, kind of up that alley of quality of care tends to be a little lower because you are changing care providers. And so this group meets um, the other 30% or so of demand. I see. So the first group is pretty much what we are aiming to be. And the second group is basically the third party that, that we are currently partnering. Yeah, very okay. much so. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. So as the last step in the strategic fit before I move to the financial assessment is basically the image part. Uh, I would like to know there, how will such an investment and transformation change and affect our brand image as the hospital group? Sure, and do you, um, just to understand, do you see this as a potential risk benefit or, or trying to, to explore that? Yeah, whether if it will have any impact on our brand image as the as the company in the eyes of the customers okay no makes sense so the the client itself as a, a hospital group across its services is a has a very prestigious brand reputation um but again for this particular set of services we do know that having that continuity of care and a, a single care provider really increases quality as well as perception and satisfaction among patients um, so we do believe that providing that all in-house would improve the hospital's brand image. Okay, perfect. So at the first look, it looks like we can grow with this investment and also increase our reputation, improve our brand image while this investment sounds quite achievable. But of course, we need to deep dive into the financials a little bit to see whether it's really financially feasible or not as well. Let's quickly discuss how the candidate is performing so far. One of the strengths of the candidate is that he is quite adaptive and uses case-specific terminologies in his analysis, such as pathology services, third-party lab-based practices, cancer patients, and so on. Pay attention that he synthesizes his learnings at the end of the strategic fit section before moving to financial assessment. It is a good habit to form interim conclusions like this so that both the candidate and interviewer understand how the findings so far will help solve the client's problem. So at this point, I would like to, if it's okay, that just move to the next section and to see how will such investment change our profitability as it was the major concern. And in there, basically, I would like to break it into two areas. One will be, as we discussed before, the profit that's going to be generated thanks to the service from the pathology services, let's say. And the second will be the profit, the additional profit we're going to have from the additional cancer patients who start to use our service because now we are providing a higher quality service as we discussed before. And to do those, basically, I would like to check the profit structure. So the, on one hand, it's going to be the revenues and on the other one, it's going to be the costs. And there under the profit, I would like to see the how what's going to be the quantity. Probably it's going to be the, the number of patients or num number of services that it will be a little bit technical. So I would like to get some help there. And then times the price of that service will basically give me the revenue. And on the other hand, in the cost side, that there will be probably a fixed cost and variable cost. Under fix, I can just, you know, say rent, labor, 
any kind of marketing or any other fixed cost and under the variable the, it will be the, pretty much the cost of serving one customer one patient would which may be either material or any other variable cost. And this will help me to build my annual profitability structure. While on the other hand, I would like to deduct the one of investment costs from the five year total annual profits to come up with a basically net profit at the end of five years to compare this with our target of $30 million and to see whether it's feasible or not. Perfect. Now that, that sounds like all the components we want to cover. Um, do you have a preference for starting on the pathology services side versus the, the just overall uplift? To just keep it easier as, as a starting point that I would like to start from the profit that we can generate from the additional cancer patients. And there basically I would like to know, first of all, the number of patients which we covered briefly, but I would like to also just clarify that. And then the price uh, per patient that we uh, generate. So it will give us the revenues and times our gross margin, which will give us our profit from an additional patient. And then I would like to multiply it with five to find the five year additional profit from the additional cancer patients, basically. How does that sound? Yep, that sounds great. Um, definitely makes sense. And we do have data points for, for all three of those components. Um, so in terms of the expected increase in number of cancer patients, we're anticipating about 10,000 more patients per year. The average price charged for these cancer treatments is $10,000 per treatment. And then that gross margin um, on these cancer treatments is about 10%. Okay, so 10,000, so it's gonna be 10% increase in the number of patients, $10,000 per patient and the 10% profit, gross profit margin. Okay, perfect, that will give us around 10 million a year. And if we calculate a five year value, it's gonna be $50 million additional profit from just the additional cancer patients. Okay, perfect. Um, then, on the other hand, um, when it comes to additional profit from the pathology services that um, I would like to take just 30 seconds to, to build my formula and then I will discuss with you. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. As I mentioned before, there will be um, two cost elements. One is going to be fixed and one is going to be the variable. So when it comes to fixed cost, um, I would like to know what is going to be our total fixed cost there and I will multiply that with the number of hospitals because we, I know that we have 20 hospitals and then on the other end on the variable cost side I would like to know how many more patients we will serve and what will be the variable cost per patient there. So the total of those will be, will give me the total annual cost, annual running cost for a year. And I will calculate the price times number of patients, which gonna give me the revenues. And then I will subtract the cost figure from the revenue to find the annual running profit. And finally, I will multiply it with five, which is the number of years. Um, if it's okay, um, can I, please ask if we have any information on those points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so on the fixed cost side, we do have some information on the cost of pathology services per hospital per year. Mm -hmm. So you need about 10 medical personnel per hospital to run these services. The pay per medical staff is around 200 grand per year. Um, there's also some equipment that they need. So the average license cost for Microsoft software is about 1.5 million. And then there's also insurance costs of about half a million dollars. Okay. Okay. So 200,000 times 10 and one and a half million and a half a million on the, the fixed end. Okay, perfect. And on the variable cost side that I would like to know what's gonna be the variable cost per patient 
and then how many patients are we going to serve so this will give me our total annual variable cost absolutely great question so in terms of variable costs it's about a hundred dollars per patient and then for that total number of patients as you may remember we currently have around 100,000 cancer patients, and then we'll get another 10K um, from this uplift that we've already discussed. Right, right. Okay, perfect. Yeah, 110K times $100 per patient. Okay. With those information that I can calculate the, the fixed and the variable cost, and then I would like to subtract that from the revenues, which I need the price per patient to calculate as we know that the number of patients is going to be 110k so if i can just have the price information i can calculate the annual revenues as well do we know at what price are we going to serve to those customers we do so on average these services are priced at about a thousand dollars per patient mm -hmm. okay perfect perfect um then i would like to just take a moment to calculate the annual profit and then i'll get back Yep, that sounds great. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so out of those calculations that I end up with approximately $19 million profit per year multiplied by five, that will give us $95 million. And those $95 million added up with the $50 million that we previously calculated for the addition from the profit from the additional patients, then it's going to be $145 million in five years. It's going to be our total profit. But as the last point, as I mentioned before, then we need to subtract the capex from that. So probably we will have one of investment per hospital. So I would like to know finally that data and then calculate the net profit over the next five years. Do we have any information on this? Yeah, we do. And, and good call on calling that out per hospital. So we anticipate about $5 million worth of investment costs per hospital. Okay, so 5 million times 20 is going to be 100 million. Then if you subtract it from 145, then we will have $45 million in total of five years. Yeah, okay. exactly. So what's, yep. what's your take there? Okay, yeah, um, well, it sounds feasible from financial perspective, but of course, we also need to make sure that we can afford this investment. So at that point, I would like to check whether we have enough cash to make this investment or whether we have enough revenues, uh, sorry, profits, any cash flows that I can use as a source of investment for for this 100 million do we know anything about it yeah no great question based on our conversations with the client uh they are confident they can afford that level of investment so i think we're we're in good shape for a strategic fit for the financial piece um so before concluding the case could you just lay out for our clients some of the potential risks that you see with moving forward yeah sure sure Wonderful. good to hear good to hear that they can afford it and looks all good um, so in terms of risks, um, can I take a moment to just gather my toes? Yeah, please do. Thank you. So in terms of risks, I would like to assess three points. One is that what's going to be our relationship with our current partners whom we work to, to basically get the pathology services. And the second is that we covered this like at a high level before, but I would like to check whether we can really integrate our processes with that new service. And the third one will be the demand that we just assume, estimated will it be sustainable going forward or not. I wonder if the client ever investigated any of those areas. What do you think? Yeah, those, those are all great points. Um, in terms of the your comment on the provider, so we know that they also have a medical equipment retail company and the client does work with them to supply some materials for the hospital. That only accounts for 4% of their total um, material procurement today, but there, there is that relationship. 
Um, I think your second point was around whether or not they could really integrate this new service with the current hospital group's processes. And since they did, they were successful in doing this with the blood lab test, we don't see that as too big of a risk. Um, and then I, I think your final point was around demand. So we don't have any information on, on that today, but we do know that based on customer surveys, um, really what cancer patients care most about is having that flawless delivery of service and having continuity and confidence in their care provider. So, um, so based on that, as long as we're able to offer that and deliver that, which is really one of the main goals of bringing that service in-house, we, we feel like that's in good shape. Okay, perfect. So the partner relationship is not going to get affected a lot, and we are confident to integrate the pro processes and the demand. We are pretty sure that it's going to be sustainable. Um, it looks pretty good, actually, that I would like to just ask for 30 seconds to structure my re recommendation, then I would like to conclude the case if you don't want to cover any other point. Yeah, I think that sounds great. We'd love to hear your final thoughts for the client. Awesome, thank you. I would like to recommend the client go ahead with this investment because of the following three reasons. First of all, this investment sounds profitable because it will generate 45 million additional profit while our objective is 30 million profit in the total of next five years. The second reason is that if implemented successfully, which sounds feasible, this investment can enhance our capabilities as a hospital to further expand in other areas to provide more services in the future. And the third reason is that as we just covered, there is no significant risk associated to this investment. So it looks pretty sound in that perspective as well. Going forward, I recommend the client to start building their labs and then starting the marketing of the, the new services. Wonderful. I think all of that makes sense and we'll, we'll share that back with the client. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Overall, the candidate shows an outstanding performance in the case. Let's go through the prep matter evaluation criteria to assess his performance in detail. Beginning with problem solving and insights. Structure. One of the strongest areas of the candidate. Specifically, in the profit uplift calculation, his structure is easy to follow and comprehensive. Judgment. Even though the case is a life sciences case, a topic that might come across as challenging for many candidates, he seems to be at ease with case-specific terminologies. Rigor. The case involves a moderate level of calculations, especially while checking the client's financial objective. By using micro-level data provided by the interviewer, he manages to reach $50 million additional profits from cancer treatment services and $95 million profits from pathology services in the next five years successfully. Creativity. He shows a good level of creativity, but more importantly, he is able to show this proactively, such as during the financial assessment of the case. Synthesis. He is able to convey his key learnings after each column in his framework, strategic fit, financial assessment, and risks. He is quite disciplined in discussing the so what of the analysis regularly, similar to consultants' day-to-day -day interactions with their clients. Next, communication and presence. Presence. Overall, he shows a professional attitude throughout the case. He is confident, yet also maintains a positive attitude even under pressure. Precision. He is able to articulate his thoughts clearly in his initial framework approach to calculate annual profits, and final recommendation. Active listening. He is quite receptive to the verbal cues and data points received by the interviewer throughout the case. Relationship management. He is able to build a nice rapport with the interviewer. This is aided by his overall demeanor, as well as the way he incorporates case-specific language into the interview, which signals he is listening closely.